In a few moments, we're going to ask you to imagine yourselves in an earlier time, around 1900, and in places that may not be familiar. But please remember, we are in a modern theater. The emergency exits are indicated, and the washrooms are in the lobby. During the show, please don't do anything to distract the actors, which means put your cell phones on mute, do not use flash photography, and don't crinkle your candy wrappers. The municipality of North Grenville acknowledges that the municipality operates on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabek. We honor the historic relationship of the Haudenosaunee and huron wendat peoples to this land. Now, please sit back and enjoy the show. Now tell me 
he married just Crocky, no. You see, it was that terrible mother of his that pulled this all through. Still, in the eyes of the law, you will not be her wife, but his. And so I hold that Crocky ought to be informed. Oh, no. If you ladies are shamming sleep in the expectation that I shall awake you in the manner of beloved ladies, <laughs> abandon all such expectations. You impertinent boy! Oh, I knew that was it, though I don't know everything. I'm not young enough to know everything. Young enough? Oh, don't you see? I'm not young enough to know everything. I'm sure it's awfully clever, mm. but it's so puzzling. Ernest, say to Mr. Treherne. Now look here, Treherne. I'm not young enough to know everything. How do you mean, Ernest? I mean what I say. Say it again. Say it more slowly. <laughs> I'm not young enough to know everything. Oh, I see. What you really mean, my boy, is that you're not old enough to know everything. No, I don't. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it. Of course it is. Yes, Ernest, that's it. Crichton! Crichton, I am not young enough to know everything. <laughs> oh. Oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, now, try. <laughs> Something better to do with it than play cricket. I hear you bowl with your head. I'm afraid that cricket is all I'm good for, Ernest. Indeed, it isn't. You're sure to get on, Mr. Treherne. Oh, thank you, Miss Catherine. But it was the bishop who told me so. He said a clergyman who breaks both ways is sure to get on in England. Oh, I'm jolly glad. You're here, Ernest. Feeling fit for the voyage, Trevor. Looking forward to it. In our news. That's right. Now then, Mary, up and doing, up and doing. Time we had the servants in, they enjoy it so much. They hate it. To your duties, Mary. Congratulations, Brocky. Oh, thanks. Mother, please. Mother is very pleased. Now, do you go on the yacht with us? Uh, no, I can't. And look here, Ernest. I will not be called Brocky. Oh, Mother, don't love me. She does not. We are quite ready, Crichton. Oh, how Crichton enjoys it. He's the only one who doesn't, pitiful creature. Oh, I can't help being a conservative, my lord. Be a man, Crichton. You are the same flesh and blood as myself. My lord. Show them in. And by the way, they weren't all here the last time. And all, my lord, except the merest trifle. It must be every one. And remember this, for the time being, you are my equal. I shall soon show you whether you are not my equal. Do as you're told. <laughs> and girls, remember, no condescension. The first to condescend is your sons. By the way, Brocklers, can you do anything? How do you mean? Can you do anything with a penny or a handkerchief? Make them disappear, for instance. <laughs> Good heavens, no. <laughs> it's a pity everyone in our position ought to be able to do something. Ernest, I shall probably ask you to say a few words. Something bright and sparkling. Oh, but my dear uncle, I have prepared nothing. Anything you prompt you. Well, if anything strikes me, spur of the moment. Mrs. Perkins. Very delighted, Mrs. Perkins. Mary, our friend, Mrs. <coughs> Perkins. How do you do, Mrs. Perkins? Won't you sit here? Agatha! How do you do? Won't you sit down? Lord Brocklehurst, my valued friend, Mrs. Perkins. Ernest, don't leave me even for a moment. This sort of thing is completely opposed to all my principles. You stick with me, Brocky, and I'll pull you through. Monsieur Fleury, the chef. <laughs> very charming to see you, Monsieur Fleury. Thank you very much. <laughs> Agatha, recitation. 
Mr. Rolston. How do you do, Rolston? Mr. Thompson. Have you been to the opera? 
What's the good weather like in the kitchen? <laughs> For heaven's sakes, woman, be articulate. No, my lady, his lordship may compel us to be equal upstairs, but there will never be equality in the servant's hall. What's that? No equality? Can't you see, Crichton, that our division into classes is artificial? That if we were to return to nature, which is the aspiration of my life, all would be equal. If I might make so bold as to contradict your lordship, Go on. The divisions into classes, my lord, are not artificial. Uh, they are the natural outcome of a civilized society. Uh, my lady, there must always be a master and servants in all civilized communities, for it is natural, and whatever is natural is right. I find it very unnatural to stand here and allow you to talk such nonsense. Yes, it is, my lord. That is what I've been striving to point out to your lordship. What is the matter with Fisher? She is looking daffodils. The tedious creature. Some question of etiquette, I suppose. How are you, Fisher? I am nothing, my lady. I am nothing at all. Oh, dear. Who says so? His lordship, as this kitchen wench, is to have a second cup of tea. But why not? Well, if it pleases his lordship to offer it to her before offering it to me, so that is it. Do you want another cup of tea, Fisher? No, my lady. But my position, I should have been asked first. Oh, dear. <laughs> My friends, I'm glad to see you all looking so happy. <laughs> you used to be predicted by the scoffer that these meetings would prove distasteful to you. Are they distasteful? I hear you laughing at the question. <laughs> <laughs> no harm in saying, but amongst us today is one who was formerly hostile to the movement, but who today has been won over. I refer to Lord Brocklehurst, who I believe would presently say to me that if the charming lady by his side has derived as much pleasure from his company as he has from hers, he will be more than satisfied. For the time being, the artificial and unnatural, I say unnatural, barriers to society are swept away when the day could be swept away forever. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but that is entirely and utterly out of the question. And now, my friends, for a few months we are to be separated. As you know, my daughters, Mr. Ernest and Mr. Treherne, are to accompany me on my yacht, on a voyage to distant parts of the earth. In less than 48 hours, we shall be underway. <laughs> Do not think our life on the yacht to be one long, idle holiday. My views on the excessive luxury of the day are well known, and what I preach I am resolved to practice. I have therefore decided that my daughters, who each have three maid oats at present, shall on this voyage have but one maid between them. I know what My mind is made up. I cordially agree. <laughs> and now, my friends, I should like to think that I should leave you with some piece of advice some thought, some noble saying over which you might ponder in my absence. In this connection, I remember a proverb which has had great effect on my own life. I first heard it many years ago. I have never forgotten it. It constantly cheers and guides me. That proverb is uh, the Proverb was, 
Uh, the proverb I speak of... Oh, my dear, I believe he has forgotten it. The, the proverb... Uh, the proverb to which I refer... <laughs> I have it now. Right. Right. The proverb. The proverb. The proverb. Oh, my lord. This way. The proverb. The proverb. <laughs> what may? I must go, Mary, that dreadful kitchen maid. I can't blame you, George. Your father's views are shocking to me. My respect for myself, Mary, but my natural anxiety as to what mother will say. I will see you, darling, before you sail. Oh, selfish brute. What about my speech? Why, May? Among the three of us, what's to be done? Oh, who you shall have to do for you. Don't be afraid. 
Her appearance, my lady, is homely, uh, and her manners, as you may have observed, deplorable. <laughs> but she has a heart of gold. And what is your position downstairs? Oh, I'm a tweeny, your ladyship. A what? A tweeny, that is to say, my lady, that she is not at present, strictly speaking, anything. A between maid, she helps the vegetable maid. It is she, my lady, who conveys the dishes from the one end of the kitchen table where they are placed by the cook to the other end where they enter into the charge of Thomas and John. I see. And you and Crichton are uh, keeping company? A butler don't keep company, my lady. Does he not? Uh, no, my lady. Uh, we butlers may, uh, but we do not keep company. I know what it is. You were engaged. Uh, uh, certainly not, my lady. The utmost I can say at present is I have cast a favorable eye. Uh, as you choose. But I'm afraid, Crichton, she just will not suit us. Uh, uh, my lady, uh, beneath the simple exterior, I've concealed a very sweet nature and rare womanly gifts. Unfortunately, that is not what we want. Uh, and it is she, my lady, who dresses the hair of the ladies' maids for our evening meals. She dresses Fisher's hair. Yes, my lady. And I does them up when they go to parties. Does? Do's. <laughs> <laughs> and it's me what alters your gowns to better. What alters? Which alters? Mary? <sighs> I shall certainly have her. Uh, we shall certainly have her. Tweeny, we've decided to make a lady's maid of you. Oh, Lux! We are doing this for you, so that your position socially may be more nearly akin to that of Crichton. It will undoubtedly increase the young person's chances. Then, if I get a good character from Mrs. Perkins, she will make all the necessary arrangements. Lady. By the way, I hope that you're a good sailor. You don't mean, my lady. I like to go on the ship. Certainly. But, but you ain't going, sir. No. Then neither ain't I. You must. Believe him, not me. Don't be silly, girl. A crime will be considered in your wages. I ain't going. I fear this, my lady. Nothing will budge me. Leave the room. Crichton, I think you might have shown more displeasure with her. Uh, I was touched, my lady. I, I see, my lady, that to part from her would be a wrench to me, though I could not well say so in her presence, not yet having decided how far I shall go with her. The ingrate! The smug! The fuck! What is it now, Father? <laughs> that man of mine, Rolleston, refuses to accompany us because you are to have but one maid! Hurrah! <laughs> Father, darling, rather than you should lose Rolleston, we will consent to take all the three of them. Who? Nonsense! Quite. find me a valet who can do with that three maids. Yes, my lord. In the time, my lord, the, the more suitable the party, the less willing will he be to come with her the, the usual purposes. Anyone will do, my lord. <coughs> the ingrate, the puppy! Me? As the favor of a servant? Never. <clears throat> then I will. Crichton, would it not be very distressing to you to let his lordship go, attended by a valet who might prove unworthy? It is only for three months. Don't you think that you, you yourself, you, <coughs> I beg your pardon, think of the joy to tweet. No. Crichton, do you think it's safe to let the master you love go so far away without you while he has these dangerous views on equality? My lord, I have found a man. Already? Who is he? Yourself. Father, how good of him. Uncommon good. Thank you, Crichton. This helps me be 
nicely out of a hole, but oh, how it will annoy Rolleston. Come with me, and we shall tell him. Not that I think you've lowered yourself in any way. Come along. My lady, a uh, valet's hand. I had no idea you would feel it so deeply. Why did you do it? I am curious, Crichton, and I insist upon an answer. My lady, I, I am the son of a butler and a lady's maid, perhaps the happiest of all combinations. And to me, the most beautiful thing in the world is a haughty, aristocratic English house with everyone kept in his place. Though I were equal to your ladyship, where would the pleasure be to me? It would be counterbalanced by the pain of feeling that Thomas and John were equal to me. But Father said if we were to return to nature. Oh, if we did, the first thing we should do would be to elect a head. Circumstances might alter cases. The same person might not be master. The same persons might not be servants. Well, I can't say as to that. Nor should we have the deciding of it. Nature would decide for us. You seem to have thought this out very carefully, Crichton. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lady. And you have done this for us, Crichton, because you thought that that father should be kept in his place. Oh, I should prefer you, my lady, to say that I have done it for the house. Thank you, Crichton. Mary, be nicer to him. If there was any way in which we could show our gratitude. If I might venture, my lady, but would you kindly show it by being more like Lady Mary? That disdain is what we like from our superiors. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, do we, the upper servants, disdain the lower servants while they take note on the odds and ends. <laughs> oh dear, what a tiring day. I feel dead. Tuck in your feet, you selfish thing. Ooh. I wonder what you meant by circumstances might alter cases. Don't talk, Mary. I was nearly asleep. I wonder what you meant by the same person might not be master and the same persons might not be servants. Oh, do be quiet, Mary. You said nature would decide. Leave it to nature. I wonder.
Catherine and Agatha Lassaby, along with two servants. We are the sole survivors of Lord Lone's steam yacht Bluebell, which encountered a fearful gale in these seas and soon became a total wreck. The crew behaved gallantly, putting us all into the first coat. What became of them I cannot say. But we, after dreadful sufferings and insufficiently clad in whatever garments we could lay hold of in the dark, please do not describe our garments, succeeded in reaching this island with the loss of only one of our party, namely, Lord Rome, who flung away his life in a gallant attempt to rescue a servant who had fallen overboard. But, Ernest, it was Crichton who jumped overboard trying to save Father. Yes, well, it was rather silly of Uncle to fling away his life by trying to get into the boat first. And as this document may be printed in the English papers, I thought that as an English peer, that's very thoughtful of you, Ernest. Yes. By night, the hissing of wild cats and the slithering of snakes terrifies extremely. Terrify the ladies extremely. <laughs> Against these, we have no weapons except for one cutlass and a hatchet. A bucket is at present our only comfortable seat. And Ernest is sitting on it. Oh, hush, do be quiet. To add to our horrors, night falls suddenly in these parts, and it is then that savage animals begin to prowl and roar. Have you also said that vampire rats will suck the blood from our toes as we sleep? No. I end up. Rescue us or we perish. Rich reward, signed Ernest Woolley, in command of our little party. <laughs> now, this was taken out of a book of poetry that Crichton found in his pocket when we were wrecked. <laughs> Fancy Crichton being a reader of poetry. Now I shall put this into this bottle and fling it into the sea. The tide is going out, and we mustn't miss the coast. <laughs> Crichton! Anything the matter, sir? Yes. The tide, Crichton, is a postman who calls at our shores twice a day for letters. Thank you, sir. Oh, poor Crichton. I believe he is beginning to lose his sense of humor. Now come along, Ed. <laughs> How horribly still it is. It is best when it is still. Mary, I have heard it is always very still just before they jump. Don't! Uh, 
clear, far from the track of commerce. Thank you. I understand. You are a good plotter, my lady. I shall try to be. How dare you cry out! Oh, uh, I beg your ladyship's pardon, but you are. And until a ship comes, we are three men who are going to do our best for you ladies. Uh, Mr. Ernest does not work. Mm, but he will, my lady. I doubt it. No work, no dinner will make a great change in Mr. Ernest. No work, no dinner? Since when did you invent that rule, Cryer? Oh, well, I didn't invent it, my lady. I, I seem to see it growing all over the island. Mm -hmm. Your manner strikes me as curious. Oh, I hope not, my lady. <gasps> You are not implying something so unnatural, I presume, that if I and my sisters do not work, there will be no dinner for us? Oh, if it is unnatural, my lady, then that is the end of it. If. Now, I see. The perfect servant at home holds that we are all equal now. I understand. Oh, my lady, can you think me so inconsistent? That is it. Oh, my lady, I, I disbelieved in equality at home because it was against nature, and for that same reason I have utterly disbelieve it on an island. I apologize. There must always, my lady, be one to command, others to obey. Yes. <clears throat> one to command, and others to obey. Curtain! What is it, my lady? Oh! But I know. Yes, right. 
but you are also idling. We mustn't waste time to work. Uh, to work. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. To be a little more simple. Crap, let me help. Is that. <coughs> is, is that. But, it, but I must be dreaming again. That isn't by any chance a pot on top of a fire, is it? Indeed, it is, dearest. It is our supper. I have been dreaming of a pot on top of a fire for two days. There's nothing in it, is there? Sniff, Uncle. Uh, it smells of onions. Father, you have boots, so he has. Of course I have. You're actually wearing boots. Oh, it is very unsafe, you know. We've all abandoned them. Observe. Is it? Oh, yes. You know, the, the blood and the arteries and this kind of... I have to know. Oh, yes. Oh, Father, yes. he is trying to take your boots from you. Oh, there isn't anything in the world we wouldn't give for boots. I only wanted them lonely. If you lend them to anyone, it will be to us, won't it, Father? Uh, certainly, my child. Very well. I don't want your old boots anyway. You don't suppose you could lend me one boot? I do not! I, all I can say is I feel sorry for you. Oh, Father, we thought we should never see you again. I was washed ashore, my dear, clinging to a hen coop. How awful that first night was. Poor Father! And when I woke, I wept. And I began to feel extremely hungry. There was a large turtle on the beach. I remember from the Swiss family Robinson that if you turn a turtle over, he is helpless. <laughs> I crawled towards him. I flung myself upon him. The nasty, spiteful brute! You didn't turn him over? The senseless creature wouldn't wait. I found that none of them would wait. We would have been as badly off if Christ Don't praise Christ! And then those beastly monkeys. I always understood that if you flung stones at them, they would retaliate by flinging coconuts at you. Would you believe it? I flung a hundred stones at them, and not one monkey had sufficient intelligence to grasp my meaning. <laughs> How I longed for Crichton. Us also, Father. Were you also? I spent hours trying to make a fire. The authors say that when wrecked on an island, one can obtain a life by rubbing two pieces of stick together. The liars? <laughs> all this time, you thought there was no one on the island but yourself. I did until today. I was searching the palms for little fishes that I caught in my hat. When suddenly, I saw before me, on the sand. What? A hairpin. A hairpin? It must be one of ours. Give it to me, Father. No, no. it's mine. I didn't keep it. Didn't keep it? <coughs> Found a hairpin on the island, and you didn't keep it? My dear. No, Father, we've returned to nature more than you bargained for. For shame, and Father, there is something I want you to do at once. I mean, to assert your position as chief person on the island. But who would presume to question it? Uh, she must be earnest. Must I? It's cruel to say anything against Ernest. If anyone presumes to challenge my position, I shall make short work of it. Well, here comes Ernest now. See if you can say these horrid things to his face. I shall put him in his place at once. But how? I have just thought of an extremely amusing way of doing it. Uh, Ernest! Excuse me, Uncle, I am busy. I am thinking. I have been thinking also. That don't matter. Hey! Planning out the building of this hut. This is important. I have been thinking that I ought to give you my boots. Father! No, 
Take them, my boy. And now, Ernest, I suppose you want to know why I give them to you? No, not at all. The important thing is, I've got them. I have got them. The reason is that, Ernest, as head of our little party, you shall be our hunter. You shall clear the woods of those savage beasts that make them so dangerous. And now you know, my dear nephew, why I have given you my books. <coughs> I shall now assert myself. Call Crichton. Oh, Father! Crichton! Crichton, look here. Hush! Crichton, I need your advice on what I ought to do with Mr. Ernest. He has defied me. Ooh. May I speak openly, my lord? That is what we desire. Then I may say, your lordship, that I have been considering Mr. Ernest's case at all moments ever since we were wrecked. My case? Silence! Since landing on the island, my lord, it seems to me that Mr. Ernest's epigrams have been particularly brilliant. Ah, why thank you, Crichton. But I find, I seem to find it growing wild, my lord, in the woods that sayings which would be justly admired in England are not much use on an island. I would therefore most respectfully propose that henceforth, every time Mr. Ernest favors us with an epigram, his head should be immersed in a bucket of cold spring water. <laughs> Serve him right. Oh, I should like to see you try and do it, Uncle. It's my feeling, my lord, that at the next defense, I should convey him to a retired spot where I shall carry out the undertaking in as respectful a manner as is consistent with a thorough immersion. <laughs> Father, you must not permit this. Ernest is your nephew. After all, Crichton, he is my nephew, and as I am sure he can now see, I am a strong man. Not a strong man. You mean a stout man. You are one of mine to two of matter. Oh. <laughs> Is it to be before the ladies, Mr. Ernest, or in the privacy of the wood? <laughs> Come. All right. <laughs> Bring the bucket. <laughs> I feel sorry for him, but I had to be firm. Oh, Father, it wasn't you who was her. Crichton did it himself. Bless me, so he did. Be strong, Father. Can't mean my faithful Christ. Yes, I do. Lady Mary, I state my word that Crichton is incapable of acting this summer. I know that. I know as well as you do. But don't you see that that is what makes him so dangerous? By Jove, I believe I catch you, meaning. He's coming back. Let us all go into the hut, just to show him at once that this is our hut. I implore you, Father, assert yourself now and forever. I will. And please don't ask him how you are to do it. Have you completed my instructions, Crichton? Uh, yes, my lord. <gasps> it's infamous! Infamous! My orders, Agatha! Now, Father, please! Before I give you any further orders, Crichton. Oh. Uh, yes, my lord. Who? It's all right. No, Father! Please! Go on! Uh, well, well, it's, it's this question of leadership. What do you think of it now, Crichton? Uh, my lord, I feel it is a matter with which I have nothing to do. Ah, Mary, that settles it, I think. Mm, it seems to, but I'm not so sure. It, it will settle itself naturally, my lord, without any interference from us. Father! It settled itself long ago, Crichton, when I was born a peer, and you, for instance, were born a servant. Oh, yes, my lord, well, that is how it all came about, quite naturally in England. We had nothing to do with it there. We shall have as little to do with it here. 
That's all right. One moment. Crowder, his lordship will continue to be our natural head. Uh, I dare say, my lady, uh, I dare say. But you must know. Oh, asking your pardon, my lady, uh, one can't be sure on an island. Crichton, I don't like this. The more I think of it, my, my lord, the more uneasy I become myself. When I heard that your lordship had left that hairpin behind, one hairpin among so many would have only caused dissension. Uh, not so, my lord. Uh, with that hairpin, we, we could have made a needle. Uh, with that needle and skins, we could have sewn trousers, of which your lordship is in need. Indeed, we are all in need of them. Oh! Uh, on an island, my lady. Father! Uh, my lady, if, if nature does not think them necessary, you may be sure she won't ask you to wear them. Right, you will now say, down with nature. Oh, my lord. Then this is my final word to you. Take a month's notice. Your lordship has a disgrace. <laughs> Not another word. You may go. And don't come to me crying for a character. Are you all forgetting that we're on an island? <laughs> <laughs> it makes only this difference that you must go at once, cry to some other part of the island. My lady, let me work for you. Go. Uh, but you need me so sorely. Uh, I can't desert you. Uh, I won't. Then, Father, there is but one alternative. We must leave him. It seems a pity. You will work for us? Most willingly, but I most warn you all that so far, Crichton has done nine pains of this story. Then the question is, are we to leave this man? My dears, come! Oh, my lord! Ernest, Treherne, get our things! Uh, Uncle, we don't have any. And besides, whatever's left belongs to Crichton. Everything we have he brought from the wreck. He went back to it before it sank. He breathed his life. My lord, anything you care to take is yours. Nothing. Oh, rot. If I could have your socks, right? Come, father. <laughs> we are ready. My lord, I, I implore you, I am not desirous of being fed. Do you have a try? A try at it? It may be that you will prove to be the best man. Maybe. My children, come! I'm sorry, Crichton, but of course I must go. Certainly, sir. Uh, sir, would you be so kind as to take her to the others? Sure. Oh, but what do it all mean? Does, Tweedy, does. <laughs> we shall meet again soon, Tweedy. Uh, good night, sir. Good night. I dare say they're not far away. They are headed westward, sir. The wind is blowing in that direction. That may mean, sir, that nature has already taken the matter into her own hands. They are all hungry, sir. The pot has come a boil. <coughs> Smell will be born westward. <laughs> that pot is full of nature, Mr. Turner. Good night, sir. Good night.
chickity chick, the chicken I do see. Chickity 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 chick, are you the chicken for me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the gob was out. Well, you see the ice, and if he would have catch you idling. What's he doing now? I think he's working on that plan of laying out hot and cold. And he could do it too. The man who could build a blacksmith's forge without tools. He made the tools. Out of a half dozen rusty nails. The, the sawmill twin, the speaking tube, the electric lighting. <laughs> <laughs> and look at all the things he's done with the pieces of the yacht that have washed ashore. And all in two years. He's a master, and I'm proud to pluck for. <laughs> oh, Daddy, you're of little use, but you are a bright and cheerful creature to have about the house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think of old times now? We was a bit different then. Circumstances alter cases. But, Daddy, if there was a chance of getting back... I've given up bothering about it. You bothered about it that time long ago when we saw a ship passing by the island. How we all ran like crazy folk into the water, Daddy, and screamed and held out our arms. Then it just sailed away. We haven't seen another one since. If we had the electrical contrivance we do now, Tweeny, we could have attracted that ship's notice. One touch on that lever, and in moments, bonfires all round the shore. It's the most wonderful <coughs> thing he's built. And then, England, home! London of a Saturday night. My lord, in rising once more to address this Historic chamber! Oh, and there was this little M and beef shop off Edgware Road. Uh, Twee, do you think I could have an egg to my tea? What's this about an egg? Why should you have an egg? That is my affair, sir. The gov's never put my head into the bucket. Well, nor mine for nearly three months. <laughs> you know, Twee, it was only last week that he said to me, Ernest. The water cure has worked marvelous in you, and I question whether I shall require to dip you any further. Of course, that sort of thing encourages a fellow. I will <laughs> say, Annie, I've never seen a chap more improved. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's very precious to me. I see, John. What have you got there? It's a set of research. It's a little present for the god. One for each day in the week. Oh, shells. He'll like that. He likes sets of things. Do you notice that he, rather? He is becoming a bit magnificent of his ideas. Do you know, John, it's beginning to give me the creeps. What do you think about that brilliant robe he get the girls to make for him? I think he looks too regal in it. Regal? I sometimes fancy that that's why he's so fond of wearing it. Well, I must take these down to the ground so they uh, put an edge on them. Oh, yes. I say, John, I would like a word with you. Yes. Oh, dash it all, you know. You're a clergyman. One of the best things that God has done is to insist that none of you forget. Well then, would you, John? What? Officiate a marriage ceremony, John. Now, that's really odd. Odd? I suppose that it is natural. And whatever is natural, John, is right. No, no, no. I mean that that same question has been put to me today already. Oh, I wouldn't believe it. Ah, no. They put it to me a long time This was by the God himself. By Jove! I say, what an observant better he is. <clears throat> ah. You fancy he was thinking of you? I do not hesitate to affirm, John, that he has seen the love light in my eyes. You answered? I said yes. I, th I, I think it's my duty to officiate the call Ah, uh, you're a prick. But I wonder whether if he was thinking of you. 
Oh, well, make your mind easy about that, John. Well, my best wishes. Oh, Agatha is a very fine girl. Agatha? What, what makes you think it was Agatha? Man alive, you told me all about it as soon as we were wrecked. Oh, why? Well, Agatha's very well in her way, John, but I'm flying a bigger game. Where? Which is between those? We, her, hope her cooking has nothing to do with this. Her cooking has very little to do with this. <laughs> Does she return your affection? Oh, I believe I may say so. I am unworthy of her, but I believe I've touched her heart. Some people seem to have all the luck. As you know, Catherine won't look at me. Oh, I'm sorry, John. It's my turn. I'm a second living sort of chap. <coughs> my heart is wishes, sir. Uh, how's the little black pig today? Oh, he has begun to eat again. Very good. Oh, I say, Tweety, are you very busy? Well, there's always work to do, Ernest. What do you want, me? There is something I should like to say to you if you could spare a moment. Willingly? What is it? Oh, Tweety. What an ass I used to be. Oh, let bygones be bygones. And I know great shakes even now. But what I want to say to you that I have known <coughs> but until I knew you, Tween, I never knew any woman. Take care, the bucket. Oh, oh I don't, I don't undervalue the bucket. <coughs> uh, but, but the sweet refinement of a dear girl such as herself has done more for me than any bucket could do. Are you offering to walk out with me, Annie? Oh, uh, more than that, um, I would like to build you a little house. Down in the sunny, sunny glade in Porcupine Creek. And I want to build uh, chairs and tables and knives and forks and maybe a little sideboard for you. Oh, I do like to hear you. But will there be anyone else in the house besides myself? Oh, but not very often. Um, but, but just occasionally, there would be your adoring husband. Uh, it won't do, Ernest. <laughs> it isn't as if I should very much be there. <laughs> oh, I know, oh, I know, but I don't love you. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Twice a week, I shall be away altogether at the dinner, and on all the other days you would never see me, from breakfast time until supper. <laughs> and if you like, I'll even go fishing on Sundays. <laughs> it's no use, Ernest. Oh, sorry, Tweety, it can't be helped. But you know, we shall be disappointing the gov. What's that? Oh, yes, uh, he wanted us to marry. You and me? The gov? Oh, there she is. There's the thing what stole his off of my. Right, you, Polly, why don't you have a wife, you fate? Come, Tweety, be nice to me. It's a splendid buck. Where did you get it? <sighs> now, I sighted a herd near Penguins Creek, but had to creep round Silver Lake to get windward of them. <coughs> However, they excited me. And then the fun began. There was nothing for it but to try and run him down. So I singled out fat buck, and away we went. Down the shore of the lake, up the valley of the rolling stones, he doubled back into brawling river and took to the water, but I swam after him. The river's only, mm, half a mile broad there, but it runs strong. He went spinning down the rapids, down I went in pursuit. He clambered ashore, I clambered ashore, and away we tore, helter skelter, up the hill and down again. I lost him near the marshes, got on his track again near Breadfruit Wood, and brought him down with an arrow in Firefly Grove. Aren't you tired? <laughs> tired? It was gorgeous. On <laughs> can abide a woman whistling. I like it. Drop it, Polly, I tell ya. I won't. I'm as good as you are. Is this necessary? Think how we will blame him. I beg your pardon, Tweety. If my whistling annoys you, I shall try and cure myself of it. Oh. <laughs> How did that hurt you, Tweety, dear? I can't make you lose your temper. <laughs> Indeed. 
consider, are we in time? We ran all the way. You're pleased to cook them yourself, Kay, and look sharp about it. Has the gov decided who is to wait upon him today? It's my turn. I don't see that. It'll be neither of you. He wants Polly again. Polly, you toad! How dare you look so happy! I wish, Tweeny, if there was anything I could do to make you happy also. Oh, me? I am happy. I just had a proposal, I tell you. A proposal? <laughs> not, not. Oh, you needn't be alarmed. It was only me. <laughs> you! I missed you, dear. I got such a shock. <laughs> It was only Ernest. They're beautifully fresh. Come and help me to cook them. Oh, do you mind terribly if I don't cook fish tonight? I think you might all have a good feeling to be a little more hurt. Particularly you, Maggie, seeing as our cat engaged you. You might pretend that your feelings are hurt. Oh, <clears throat> bother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to like that. Tweeny, as the dove has chosen me to wait on him, please. May I have the loan of it again? No, you mayn't. Don't you give it to her. You know quite well who first to be waited on in a skirt. I don't care. Get one for yourself. It's the only one on the island, and it's mine. Tweeny, give me the skirt directly. Don't. I won't. I shall make you. I should like to see you try. Oh! oh, oh. Very much, very much indeed. 
No more. Thank you. <coughs> Polly, there is one thing I don't quite like about you, that action of the hands. What do I do? Uh, so, li like washing them. The others tend to do it also. It, it seems odd. Have you forgotten? Uh, what? That once upon a time a certain other person did that also? You mean myself? Horrible. Oh, you haven't done it in a very long time. Perhaps it is natural to servants. Oh, that must be it. <laughs> Polly. You sighed, Gub. Oh, did I? Uh, I was thinking. Uh, I've always tried to do the right thing on this island, Polly. Uh, above all, I, I want to do the right thing by you. How we all trust you. That is your reward, Gub. Uh, now I want a greater reward. Is it fair to you? Uh, am I playing the game? Bill Crichton would always like to play the game. But if we were in England... We now know that we should never see England again. Uh, I'm thinking of two people who neither of us seen for a long time. Uh, Lady Mary Lacenby and one Crichton. Uh, a butler. That cold, haughty, insolent girl? Gov, look around you and forget them both. I had not forgotten him. He has other charms, Polly. That, that butler takes two years of becoming a, a man. He's tried to take it. Uh, there have been many failures, but there has been some success. With it, I have let the past drop off me and turned my back on it. Uh, that butler seems a faraway figure to me now, and not myself. Uh, I hail him, but we scarce know each other. If I am to bring him back, it can only be done by force, for in my soul he is abhorrent to me now. But if I thought it best for you, I would haul him back. I, I swear, as an honest man, I would bring him back with all his obsequious ways and deferential airs, and let you see the man you call your gov melt forever into him who was your servant. You hurt me. You say these things, yet you, you say them as a king. To me, it was a past that was not real. A king? A, a king? I sometimes feel... Uh, I, I say it harshly. It is so hard to say, and all the time is another voice within me crying it. If it is the voice of nature... Oh, I know it to be the voice of nature. Then, if you want to say it very much to me, Gov, Say it to Polly, Lacenby. A king. Polly, some people hold that the soul but leaves one human tenement for another, and so lives on through all the ages. I have occasionally thought of late that in some past existence I, I may have been a king. It has all come to me so naturally, not as if I had to work it out, but as if I remembered uh, yes, uh, or ever the nightly years were gone, with the old world to the grave. I was a king in Babylon, and you were a Christian slave. It may have been, you hear me, it may have been. It may have been. I am lord over all. Uh, they are the hewers of wood and drawers of water for me. Uh, these shores are mine. Why do I hesitate? I no longer have any doubt. I do believe I am doing the right thing. Dear Polly, I have grown to love you. Are you afraid to mate with me? I am the king of Babylon, and you were a Christian slave. Oh, Gal, you are the most wonderful man that I have ever known, and I am not afraid. Tell me, every woman likes to know, when did you first think me nicer than the others? <laughs> I think a year ago we were chasing goats on the big slopes. 
You outdistanced us all. <laughs> yeah, you were the first of our party to run a goat down. I was proud of you that day. I only did it to please you, Gov. Everything I have done has been out of the desire to please you. If I thought that in taking a wife from among us, you'd be imperiling your dignity. Oh, no, have no fear of that, dear. I've all thought it all out already. Uh, the wife, Polly, always takes the same position as the husband. But I am so unworthy. I thought it sufficient to be allowed to wait on you at the table. Uh, you shall wait on me no longer. At whatever table I sit, you shall soon sit there also. Come, let us try what it will be like. As a servant at your feet. Uh, no, there's a consort by my side. <laughs> Help your mistress first, girl. Kitty, are you a good girl? I try to be, go. That's right. Ernest! You are looking a little slovenly in your dress, Ernest. I don't like it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Daddy, uh, I want you. Is it because I forgot to clean out the gear? Oh, no, no. A glass of wine with me, Daddy. To your health, God. And to hers, Daddy. This lady has promised to be my wife. <laughs> Polly? I ought first to have asked her consent. I deeply regret, but uh, nature. Uh, may I hope I have your approval? May you, God? Rather, Polly! We all congratulate you, God. Long life to you both, sir. And, and when you will be, God? As soon as the bridal skirt can be prepared. My friends, I thank you for all your good wishes. I, I thank you all. Now perhaps you would like me to leave you to yourselves. Be joyous. Let there be song and dance tonight. Polly, I shall take my coffee in the parlor. You understand? <laughs> Oh! Oh, Father, they're pinching me! Oh! Catherine, Agatha, oh! never presume to pinch your sister again. Henceforth, you may pinch your sisters whenever you want. <laughs> Oh, Tweeny, it's a shame, after he had almost promised you. No, he never did. He was always as honorable as could be. It was me that was too vulgar. Don't you dare say a word against that man. <laughs> I dare say you'll get a lot of tidbits out of this, Eddie. I should think so. Because I should have to clean out the dam now. I dare say.
sheep's gone. Yes. Father, you hurt? And yes, my child. But it was a gun, Father. A, a gun? I've often heard it. it, it it's only a dream, you know. Oh, why don't we go on dancing? But don't you see they have all rushed down to the beach, Father? A rush down to the beach? I, I often dream it. It's only a dream, you know. No, come, Father, come. It's only a dream. We can see lights within a mile of the shore. A uh, great ship. A ship? Always a ship. This isn't a dream, Father. It's not a dream. You are awake, Daddy, and there is a ship. You are not deceiving me. It is the truth. The truth? A ship at last! There is a small boat between it and the island. They must have sent it to shore for water. Coming in? No. That gun must have been a signal to recall it. It is going back. They can't hear our cries. Going away? So near. So near. I think I'm glad. Um, have no fear. I shall bring them back. What will you do? To buy the beef. No, stop! Don't you see what this means? This means our time on the island has come to a natural end. Go! Let the ship go! The old man here, you saw what it means to him. But I am afraid! Dear Polly. Go! Let the ship go! Now, Bill Crichton has got to play the game.
Father, see page 81. It was a tiger cat, says Mr. Woolley, of the largest size. <coughs> Death stared Lord Loam in the face, but he never flinched. On page 81. With presence of mind equaled only by his courage, he fixed an arrow to his bow. Thank you, Ernest. Thank you, my lord. Unfortunately, he missed. But, by great good luck, I heard his cries. My cries? And rushing forward with knife drawn, I stabbed the monster to the heart. Anything in the papers, Catherine? No, Father, nothing. <coughs> nothing at all. The papers are guides. They tell us what we ought to do. And then we don't do it. You told him to take it away. Oh, I thought. <laughs> well, I shall go and dress. <laughs> Father, it's awful having Crichton here. It's like living on tiptoe. While he is here, it's like sitting on a volcano. How mean of you. I'm sure he's only stayed on with us to, to help us through. It would have looked so suspicious if he had gone at once. But suppose Lady Brocklehurst should get at him and pump him. She's the most terrifying, suspicious old creature in England. And Crichton simply cannot tell a lie. That is the volcano to which I was speaking. It's all Mary's fault. She told me the other day that she was going to break off her engagement with Brocklehurst unless I told him, her about you know what. Is she mad? She calls it common honesty. Father, have you told him? She thinks I have, but I couldn't. She's sure to find out about it tonight. It's like a bird of ill <laughs> omen. I should have this taken away. It, it's done that twice. Times. 
There was something magical about them. It was glamour. Father, I have lived Arabian nights. I have sat at a dance with the evening star. But it was all in a past existence. In the days of Babylon. And I am myself again. But he has been chivalrous always. If the slothful, indolent creature I once was has improved in any way, I owe it all to him. I have been slipping back in many ways, but I am determined not to slip back altogether in memory of him and his island. That is why I insisted on you telling Brocklehurst he can break our engagement should he choose. Mary Lacenby, is going to play the game. But Mary. Lord Brocklehurst. Father, ought you to be dressing? Uh, the, the fact is, before I go, I uh, want Lone. to say. Lowell, if you don't mind, I should very especially like to have a word with Mary before dinner. Uh, yes, uh, Father. I am ready, George. It is a painful matter. I wish I could have spared you this, Mary. Please, go on. In common fairness, of course, it is to be remembered, two years had elapsed. You and I had no reason to believe that we would ever meet again. I was so lost in the world, George. At the same time, the thing is utterly and absolutely inexcusable. Oh. And so I have said to Mother. You have told her? Certainly, Mary. Certainly. I told Mother everything. And what did she say? To tell the truth. She rather poo pooed the whole affair. Lady Brocklehurst poo pooed the whole affair. She said, Me and Mary will have a good lot over this. George, your mother is a hateful and depraved old woman. Mary! Laugh, indeed, when this will always be such a pain to me. Mary, if only you would let me bear all the pain. Oh, George, I think you are the noblest man. She was such a pretty little thing. Uh, not beautiful like you. Uh, I assure you, it was the merest of flirtations. There were some letters, but we've got them back. Yeah, it's only <laughs> to the boat being so late at Calais. And she had such large, helpless eyes. <laughs> George, when you lunched today with Father at the club. I, I didn't. He wired that he couldn't come. But he wrote you. Uh, no. And you haven't heard from him since? No. George, who and what is this woman? Uh, she was. Uh, she is. Oh, the shame of it. A, a, a lady's maid. A what? A lady's maid. A mere servant, Mary. I first met her at this house when you were entertaining the servants. So, you see, it's largely your father's fault. A lady's maid? Her name was Fisher. My maid? Mother told me not to tell you anything about it, but... I am very glad you have told me. So... You see there's nothing wrong in it? No, indeed. And she behaved awfully well. She could see that was because the boat was so late. And I suppose the glamour to a girl in service of a man in high position. Glamour. Yes, yes, I'm sure that was it. Mother says that a girl in such circumstances is to be excused if she loses her head. Oh, I am so sorry, George, if I have said anything against your mother. I'm sure she is the dearest old thing. Of course, for people of our class, there's a very different standard. Of course. And so, you see, her being such a good woman herself, she was naturally anxious that I should marry someone like her. And that is what made her watch your conduct so jealously, Mary. I know. I think before Mother comes, I should like to say a word to Father. Uh, uh, about this? 
Oh, no, I shan't say anything about this. Okay. About something else. Okay, um, and you do forgive me, Mary? Oh, yes, yes. Of course. I'm sure the book was very late. Oh, it really was. I am even relieved to know that you are not quite perfect, dear. Oh. Uh, when we are married, we shall try to be not an entirely frivolous couple, won't we? Uh, we must endeavor to be of some little use, dear. Oh, no, bless a leash. Mary Lace and B is determined to play the game. Author. I don't know. Oh, 
It was as engrossing, Mr. Bully, as if it had been a work of fiction. <coughs> oh, well, thanks. Awfully. Um, the fact is, <laughs> Lady Brocklehurst, Mr. Treherne and I, we're engaged. And Ernest and I. I see. Thought it was wise to keep the island in the family. <laughs> Younger than any of them, Emily. Flatter. You seem in high spirits, Mary. I am. After. I mean, the fact is. Uh, she hears wedding bells, Emily. <laughs> oh, do you, Mary? I can't say that I do, but then. I'm hard of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> if you do not, Lady Rocklehurst, I am sure I do not. Uh, tut, tut. Uh, let me show you my curios from the island, Emma. I should like you to examine them. I'm delighted to hear you say that, for I have already taken the liberty of inviting two of them upstairs. Hello? I have had no hand in this. <laughs> oh, who? What have I done? You are always begging me to talk to the servants, Henry. I merely want to discover if the views you used to hold on equality were adopted on the island. I mean, it seems a splendid opportunity. Yet Mr. Woolley here has not written a word on the subject. Well, the fact is... <laughs> I can assure you, Emily... Your father, nothing whatsoever happened on the island, of which I, for one, am ashamed. And I hope that Crichton will be allowed to answer all of Lady Brocklehurst's questions. Oh, oh. to be sure. Oh, there's nothing to fuss about here. This is a family party. <laughs> <laughs> now, truthfully, my man, I promise that, my lady. Well, were you all equal on the island? No, my lady. I think I may say there was as little equality there as elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so social distinctions were preserved? As at home, my lady. The servants? They had to keep their place. <clears throat> Wonderful. How is it maintained? You girl, tell me. You please, my lady. It was all the gals doing. In the regrettable <coughs> slang of the servants' hall, my lady, the master is usually referred to as the gov. I see. You. <coughs> uh, yes, I understand that's what they call me. You didn't even take your meals with the family, Crichton? No, my lady. I dined the pie. <laughs> <laughs> you girl, also, did you dine with Crichton? No, my lady. I took my bit of supper with Daddy and Polly and the rest. Oh, oh dear old Daddy. I do remember our money. <laughs> Young people will be young people, Crichton. 
even on the island. I take it there was a certain amount of, shall we say, sentimentalizing going on? Yes, my lady, there was. Mother! With which gentleman? You girl, tell me, if you please, your ladyship. The fact is... It was him, Mr. Ernest! With which lady? I have already told you, Lady Brocklehurst, that Ernest and I are engaged. Yes, but you were two years on the island. Was it this lady? No, m'lady. Then I don't care which of the others it was. Oh, I suppose that'll do. Do? Mother, I hope you are ashamed of yourself. Pray. You are an excellent fellow. If, once we are married, you wish to change place, come to us. <laughs> oh, no! Impossible! Impossible? Why impossible? Do you see why it should be impossible, my man? Yes, my lady. My lord, I had not told you, but as soon as your lordship is suited, I wish to leave service. Crichton, what will you do? Shall I withdraw, my lord? <laughs> Horrid of me, wasn't it? But if one wasn't disagreeable every now and again, it would be tediously horrible to be an old lady. <laughs> he will soon be all as Mary, and then think of all the opportunities you will have to be disagreeable to me. On that matter, don't you think you might? Quite so, quite so. Dinner is served. Thank you. 